Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what happens at your first prenatal visit. This video was actually a requested video, so thank you so much to the person who requested this video. If you guys have any requests for any topics you would like to see me discuss, go ahead and put those in the comments below. So let's start with this one though. First thing that happens, you miss your period, you take a pregnancy test, it's positive. Now what? Now what do you do? Now you want to call your doctor. If you've already been established with a doctor, you would call them. Or if you haven't had a doctor yet, you would find a doctor that's like, you know, in your insurance and all that stuff and see who's appropriate. Different types of doctors you're going to see. Family health practitioner. So this is somebody that can take care of you, mom, and it can also take care of baby. An OBGYN is somebody who specializes in obstetrics and gynecology. So they can do vaginal deliveries, but they can also do C-sections if you need to have a C-section. A nurse midwife usually works under a doctor, usually an OBGYN. They can deliver your babies in the hospital. These are advanced practice RNs, so they have you know, their bachelor's degree and then they have two more years of school to be a midwife. They cannot do C-sections though. And then if you're not going to do the family practice route, you want to get a doctor specifically for the baby, that's going to be a pediatrician. So things to think about if you don't already have these things established, think about what do you want to do, what do you expect, and who do you want to see. So once we've done all that, we've chosen our doctors and we know exactly what we want to do, now let's get into the first visit. So the major objectives for this first visit the first thing we need to do is confirm or rule out the pregnancy. And if you watched my video on the presumptive, probable, and positive signs of pregnancy, then you already know a positive pregnancy test doesn't necessarily mean that you are pregnant, right? So that's actually the first thing we need to do is either confirm or rule out the pregnancy. If we confirm it and we say, yes, you are pregnant, then the next thing we need to do is check for any risk factors. So this can include comorbidities like diabetes, high blood pressure, stuff like that. It also can include social factors like smoking cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, that sort of thing. Next, we'll determine the due date. And if you don't know how to determine the due date, I already have a video on that. It's real short. I'll link it in the description below. And then lots of patient education. Our goal here with every pregnant woman is that she will have a healthy pregnancy, a healthy delivery, and give birth to a healthy baby, right? That's what we want for all women. And a good way to make sure that happens is good patient education. Some things to know about your first visit. It's going to be the longest visit, roughly one to two hours. And that's because we need to get a lot of information from you. We're going to obtain baseline data. Things we might ask include age of menarche, which is how old were you the first time you got your period, obstetrical history, which is your GTPAL, so how many times have you been pregnant, how many deliveries have you had, if any. And if you're unfamiliar with how to figure this out, I do have a video on that, which I'll put below as well. Any medical history or surgical history, your family history and social history. Social history is like we talked about over here. Drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, that kind of stuff. Of course, we're going to do a really good head to toe because this is how we're going to get our baseline. We're going to get a weight and vitals. We'll probably do a vaginal exam, so with the speculum. And then a lot of times we're going to do an ultrasound. And depending on when you're seeing the doctor, like usually most people will come between 8 and 12 weeks for their first visit. They might do a vaginal ultrasound, which is where they actually like stick it up inside you because baby's so teeny tiny that it's hard to see on an abdominal ultrasound. So you might get an ultrasound as well at this pregnancy. It's pretty common. The other thing we're going to do is labs. So which labs are we going to do? We're going to get a baseline CBC because there are some common hematological changes that occur with pregnancy, so we need to check that out. We're going to do a blood type and antibody screen. 
If you hadn't gotten a pap smear within the past, you know, year or so, or recently, they're probably going to do a pap smear. And then they're going to do tests for presence of any sort of infections that could complicate the pregnancy or harm the baby. Now let's talk about some important patient teaching that's going to occur during the first visit. The first of which is to avoid teratogenic substances. So these are anything that could cause harm or death to the fetus, to the growing baby. This can include, you know, the things you're already thinking about, like drugs, alcohol, things like that. We want to teach them a good proper diet because remember, you're not eating for two. You're only going to increase your calories by about 300 a day. So eating healthy foods for the baby. And then exercise. Pregnant women can exercise. It is safe. But not all exercises are safe. So anything that's like low impact, low intensity, like swimming or walking or yoga, that's great exercise. Of course, infection prevention techniques. Medication use. So are they on a medication already? What meds are they? Is it safe for them to be on those? Do they need to get off of those? Do they need to find alternatives? A whole lot of things go into medication use. Also, if they're not already, we want to tell them to start taking a multivitamin, a prenatal vitamin with folic acid. And then when to call the doctor. So what's an emergency, right? So if you think you're in labor, if you're bleeding, if you're having uncontrolled pain, if you think your water broke, that kind of stuff. And then I just wanted to add at the bottom here what risk factors we're looking for. So the first one, we don't normally talk about this stuff, but a negative attitude about the pregnancy. So they're there and they're just not really happy to be pregnant, okay? And that could take a variety of um, ranges there, but overall a negative attitude about the pregnancy. If they're not happy about it, they're upset about it, they might not do the things that they need to do to stay healthy, like the proper diet and nutrition and taking the medications correctly and all that kind of stuff. So we need to assess their attitude. Getting late prenatal care. So they're not coming in in that 10 to 12 weeks for their first visit. They're not coming in until, you know, 24 weeks to get their first visit. That's a big, big risk factor. Here in the U.S., our biggest risk factor when it comes to preterm delivery, baby morbidity and mortality, mom morbidity and mortality, is lack of prenatal care. So either late prenatal care or no prenatal care at all. Abuse, we want to screen for abuse. This could be substance abuse, but it could also be physical abuse like domestic violence, intimate partner violence. So we want to screen for that. Their age could be a risk factor. So the very, very young and the older moms, these are risk factors that could complicate their pregnancy further on. And then kind of related usually to that late prenatal care is poverty. Okay, poverty is a huge risk factor. And it's a big reason why most people in the U.S. who receive late prenatal care have late prenatal care because they just can't afford it. They can't afford to go to the doctor. But there are tons and tons of free resources that we as the nurse can tell them about and you know refer them to so that they can get the best possible care for them and their baby. So that's just something extra I wanted to add when it came to the teaching because these are some risk factors we need to look out for with all of these women and this is the first time we're going to see them so we're probably not going to know much about them so now is the time to screen them for these sorts of things. So that was my video on your first prenatal visit. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.